What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so I want to go ahead and complete this series of my top ten uh, role players of all time. Uh, just to do a brief recap. At number ten, I had AC Green. At number nine, I had Draymond Green. At number eight, I had uh, Frank Ramsey, the original six man. For the Boston Celtics, at number seven, I had uh, Danny Ainge. At number six, I had Lamar Odom. At number five, I had Michael Cooper. At number four, I had the great Bobby Jones, the Minister of the Defense. At number three, I had Derek Fisher. At number two, I had a guy that I know many people put at number one, uh, Robert Ory. But at number one, I'm breaking my rule a little bit because normally I don't include Hall of Famers or guys who... Uh, also has stints as full-time players, but his impact, his role in the six-man, the creation of the six-man, I think necessitates him being number one. Heck, I'm not mistaken, I think the six-man award is named after him. And I'm talking about none other than John Havlicek. All right, now John Havlicek, from the 1969-70 season until he retired in 1978, was a full-time starter for the Boston Celtics. But before that, he was either a full-time six-man or he split time as a starter and as a reserve. But he he took what Frank Ramsey did and expanded on it to an incredible uh, capacity. Frank Ramsey is the one that accepted what was seen then as a demotion to the bench, but he became an important asset being a scorer going against oftentimes the second unit or oftentimes going against starters in the late stages of the game when they were showing signs of fatigue. John Havacek was much, I mean, to be honest with you, he was much better than uh, Frank Ramsey. But, you know, John Havacek had to work into becoming a score. Uh, when he first came to the NBA, he was really a defensive specialist. Um, and not much of a score. He had to work relentlessly on his shooting and his scoring ability. And it paid off for him ultimately, uh, becoming the all time leading, and still is the all time leading scoring, uh, leading for the Boston Celtics, 26,395 points. Um, although, Paul Pierce wound up scoring a bucket more than him, though not all with the Boston Celtics. But anyway, he was drafted back in 1962. Um, and people don't notice about John Havlicek, or people that, that watch basketball now or even the last 20, 30 years. Um, John Havlicek was a great athlete. As a matter of fact, he, he had received attention, I believe, from the Cleveland Browns, if I'm not mistaken, to be a, of all things, I believe he was, I believe he was scouted as either a cornerback or a wide receiver. I think it was a wide receiver. So this is a man that had tremendous athletic ability. You know what I'm saying? Um, and at the end of the day, he chose to focus on basketball. And um, he was known for his relentless relentlessness on the court. Um, his hustle played hard all the time. Played hard. He played hard. Uh, you know, he played an exorbitant amount of minutes. And um, in crunch times, even as a even, – even, as early as his rookie year, but especially his second year onward. In crunch time in regular season, but especially in the postseason, even if he didn't start games, he finished them, especially in the postseason. And like all great players, his production uh, increased when the stakes were higher. Um, the first four years of his career, I believe from my state, he was a full-time six-man. And the first four years of his career in the regular season, he averaged 17.8 points, 
5.7 rebounds, 2.7 assists. In the postseason, his numbers improved. 18.2 points, 6.8 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. So, as he worked on this game, he was never a great pure shooter, uh, but he worked himself into becoming a more than capable scorer. Um, may not have had the greatest percentage, but it seems like, he, he, you know, you look at his stats, it says he only shot 43.9% from the floor for his career. But if you ask his opponents and, and you ask them what did he shoot, they would say over 50% or at least 50% because it seemed like he always made the shots when it mattered. He could have a game where he's going six for 17, but down the stretch, when the Celtics needed buckets, he would make them. As opposed to a guy who looks good in the, in the stat sheet on the box score, but, you know, well, he shot 50%. Well, yeah, but did you know in the, going into the fourth quarter, he was 60%? You know, one of those deals. Uh, when he became a part time starter, before 1969, during the regular season, he averaged 19.3 points, 6.2 rebounds, 3.5 assists. But as usual in the postseason, he upped it. 22 points a game, 7.9 rebounds, 4.4 assists per contest. So, as a player, he was a great defensive player. Had that award existed, he probably would be second all-time to Bill Russell and defensive play of the year awards. Um, somewhere up there. He, I, I definitely believe he would have won that award at least five times in his career. Six man a year award. He'd probably be the all time leader in that if they, if they had an award back then. He'd be the all time leader in six man a year awards. As I said, he worked himself into becoming a great scorer. He was an undervalued rebounder. He was an undervalued assist man. Um, in 1974, Bill Russell, at that time, now maybe he didn't share the same opinion 10 or 15, 20 years later, but in 1974, Bill Russell was actually the greatest player that he ever saw. And he said that the best all-around player that he had ever seen. Now, Wilt might have been the most dominant player he ever seen, but he said the best all-around player that he had ever seen was John Havlicek. That's hot praise coming from a guy like Bill Russell. I think John Havlicek's greatest asset was his endurance. He routinely averaged more than 40 minutes a game. In the playoffs, he would sometimes average 43, 44, 45 minutes a night. Uh, Was capable of playing all 48 minutes for for several game stretches in a row. Capable of playing back-to-backs without any noticeable fatigue. And the reason behind this was... um, when he had his physical done by the Boston Celtics, uh, matter of fact, it might have been before the Boston Celtics. At, at some point in time, uh, John Havlicek had a physical done, an x-ray done. And they noticed that his lungs were unusually large. Like they filled up, they filled up, when they did the scope, or they did the x-ray of his lungs, they were like, one and a half times bigger than the average man's lungs. So John Havlicek, in the combination of his lung capacity, plus having the, the heart of a workhorse, he was able to out endurance people. You know what I mean? Like late down games, late down the stretch when even the most conditioned athletes were starting to show fatigue, John Havlicek was rarely tired. And that gave him a huge advantage down the stretch. That's why you never, that's why down the stretch in games, you see him running around on the floor. You see him running up and down the court. He like, this ain't the first quarter. This is the fourth quarter. He almost never got tired. If he did show any signs of fatigue, it was maybe toward the end of his career. But in his prime, he, he almost never got tired. As a matter of fact, anybody have time, I want you to look at, the old timers game. It might still be on YouTube. Back in the day in the All Star, during the All Star break, they had these old timer games where old legends were playing these ball games. Now they stopped it 
due to insurance reasons back in the early 90s. It might have been 92 or 93. I know uh, one of those years, a couple of players got hurt. So for insurance purposes, the NBA wasn't want to be liable for that. Uh, they stopped doing it. But in that, in that, in that 88 game, look at how hard John Habercheck is playing out there. Now, now, now remember that game had John Habercheck and Bob Cousy at the time. Habercheck was 40, 48 years old. Look how hard he and Bob Cousy was 58 at the time, 58, 59. Look how hard they're playing compared to these guys today who are in their 20s. And you wonder why a lot of us don't have no respect for these dudes today. But John Havlicek definitely was oftentimes the man who was the uh, factor in why the Celtics would win versus whoever they played in the playoffs, whether it was Will Chamberlain or whoever, whether it was Jerry West or Elgin Mailer in the finals, no matter who it was, John Havlicek was the difference. We all remember the great moment that he had in 1965 in that series. I think it was game seven against the then uh, I believe that was the San Francisco Warriors, I believe it was. And um, John Havlicek. was the one who came up with that steal. And, um, you know, that's part of what made him great. At the end of the day, uh, during that stretch, as a before he became a full-time starter, uh, John Havlicek was 6-0 in the finals. He wound up being 8-0 in his career. And uh, the last two championships, of course, he was a starter, the leader of the team, along with Dave Cowens. But uh, to me, you know, I had to put him at number one. Some people put him at number two, but I had to put him at number one. Uh, too much guy.